It's hard to believe that the Sorrento name has been part of the Kia lineup for the better part of 20 years here in America. And last year, the company introduced their most appealing Sorrento ever, the all new fourth generation. I've had a chance to show you guys a full review on the 2.5 turbo and the regular hybrid model. This generation got more appealing because it's just bigger, it's boxier, and it's far more advanced with two new electrified powertrain options. However, this week, Kia has loaned me the model that I've been waiting to drive since this new model came out. This is the 2022 Sorento plug-in hybrid, which means we have the same 1.6 liter turbo under the hood with a six speed automatic. However, the plug-in hybrid adds a much larger battery pack and standard all wheel drive, giving you the ability to go up to 32 miles of all electric range. Now, if you guys have been looking for a three row family hauler that can play double duty as an electric vehicle and a plug-in hybrid vehicle, how does the 2022 Sorento plug-in stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, because this is the plug-in hybrid model, I'm gonna first start with showing you guys what's going on underneath the hood. Now, if you guys have seen my full review on the regular hybrid, this should be pretty familiar because Kia essentially has the same gas engine. However, we get a much larger battery pack and a stronger electric motor. Now, under the hood of the Sorento plug-in, you have the company's signature 1.6 liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection smart stream four cylinder. The engine on itself makes 177 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. The difference, however, is in the electric motor output. The battery pack is now 13.8 kilowatt hours. It lives underneath the cargo floor in this vehicle. And the electric motor on its own develops nearly 90 horsepower, about 89 horsepower. Uh, and about 224 pound-feet of torque. Now, when you combine the outputs together, Kia says you get a maximum of 261 horsepower. That's an extra 34 horsepower over the regular hybrid. However, that is about 20 less horsepower versus the 2.5 turbo, and the torque output actually remains the same at 258 pound-feet. That's the same torque output as the standard hybrid. The difference with this, the plug-in hybrid is it comes standard with the company's all-wheel drive system with torque vectoring. Now, that's something that is optional on the regular hybrid. When the hybrid first launched last year, it actually was only available with front-wheel drive. I haven't had a chance to drive the hybrid the regular hybrid with all wheel drive just yet. Also a big difference with the Hyundai Kia hybrids is this uses a six speed conventional torque converter automatic instead of a CVT. Uh, Kia says that's better of course for the driving dynamics. It's gonna have you give you a more traditional feel out there on the road. Uh, range is pretty decent at 32 miles of all electric range. That is trailing something like the RAV4 Prime which offers up to 42 miles of range. However, this is one of the few three row electrified family haulers out there that actually gives you, you know, electric only range. That's something that the Toyota Highlander hybrid simply doesn't offer uh, just yet. In terms of fuel economy, this is a little bit less efficient versus the regular hybrid, but at 35 in the city and 33 on the highway, this is still decent gas mileage. Because of the larger battery pack, this weighs in at just over 4,500 pounds. It's around 300 pounds heavier versus the regular Sorento. Uh, you can still tow a maximum of 2,000 pounds and Kia didn't quote a 0 to 60 performance. However, we have our 0 to 60 testing equipment, so we'll go ahead and try that out when we get this vehicle out on the road. Now shutting the hood, let's go ahead and take a look at the styling. Now the styling is basically the same as the 2021 Sorento. So I don't have too much to report here. Uh, if you guys want the plug-in hybrid, it's only available in SX and SX Prestige, which is different versus the regular hybrid, which only comes in S and EX trim. So this is the model you're gonna, you're gonna wanna get if you want all of the features on the electrified Sorento. The big change that you'll know with a 2022 model is the badge. You can see this has the new Kia logo at the front. You have the version of the, the company's signature tiger nose grill. And then this generation Sorento definitely got a lot more boxier. It got a lot more advanced looking. I do like the way the headlights look with the full LED headlights, which are standard. You have an LED daytime running light and turn signal. Uh, and then down here, you can see in the actual grill, or in the lower front fascia, there are LED fog lights down there, which are nicely integrated into some of the air intakes. I really like the kind of textured 3D look with the black, the finish in the grill with this snow white pearl paint. You can see some of the um, vents down here are functional, which is nice. There's some black chrome, more piano black plastic trim. Uh, and let me know what you guys think of the styling of this Sorento, because I think it has aged really well. I think this is a really good looking vehicle, and I think that it's also a good size vehicle. Remember, the Sorento is kind of a tweener car. 
this is in between the size of a RAV4 and a Toyota Highlander. Now, moving around the side profile of the vehicle, uh, dimensionally, this is the same as all the other Sorrentos at 189 inches long. Its wheelbase is just under 111 inches long. So this vehicle is about nine inches longer versus like a Toyota RAV4 Hybrid or a RAV4 Prime, giving you more interior space and a standard third row. So this vehicle here has seating for up to six people because of the captain's chairs in the middle. Now, looking at the wheels, uh, this wheel used to be unique to just the plug-in hybrid. You can see it's a 19-inch wheel riding on 235-55 R19 Continental all-season tires. These wheels you can now get on the regular hybrid if you guys go for an EX with all-wheel drive. It's part of like a $2,300 option package. I do kind of wish that Kia went with a 20-inch wheel to fill out the wheel wells nicer, um, but that probably would affect the range. You can see there is a little bit of black black plastic cladding. And in terms of ground clearance, this is an SUV. A SUV Kia says this model has about 6.9 inches of ground clearance. Remember, Kia does offer an X-Line off-road uh, package that essentially lifts the vehicle up by an extra inch, but you can't get that on the plug-in hybrid, so you won't be going too far off the beaten path because it doesn't have very much ground clearance. Now, looking at the rest of the profile, you can see um, there is no like black package, so you have like chrome along the side window trim. Here you have um, LED turn signals in the mirrors. You have more silver painted accents here, although that doesn't say anything. It's just a trim piece. And then you can see the roof rails are silver. My tester is missing a $1,300 option that would include a panoramic sunroof. I think at this price, it should have been standard, but it is an a la carte option that my tester is missing frustratingly. Now looking at the rear, again, you can't really tell this is the plug-in hybrid unless you're looking at the wheels. And then if you look at the badge, you can see the back has an eco plug-in badge there to let you know that this is the plug-in hybrid. Uh, you can see the taillights have a very almost tell you ride look to them however you have two individual ones the turn signal is actually on the inner portion this is the brake light it's an led on the uh, plug-in hybrid and then there's also an all-wheel drive badge back here to let everybody know that your sorrento is all-wheel drive under here on the rear bumper valence you can see almost looks like there are exhaust tips back here but the exhaust is hidden underneath there the rear bumper also has some more black plastic cladding to give it a rugged look. And then I also like how the rear wiper is kind of hidden underneath the rear spoiler here. So it kind of gives you a cleaner look here. It looks good with the new Kia badge, of course. Now, opening up the trunk, you might be looking for the button to open up the lift gate around here. It's actually down here, right in the middle. It also has a hands-free function for the lift gate. And then when you open up the cargo area, compared to the regular Sorento, the battery pack actually lives underneath the cargo floor here. So if you pull this up, you can see there isn't much underfloor storage space. In fact, you're probably noticing there's the mobile charger. It's sitting out here because there's no room for it underneath here, which is funny to see that. Uh, it's also funny how Kia gives you this included Remember, that's something that's extra on the EV6. They're all electric vehicle, but you can see when you have the third row seat up, looking at this portion here, you only get 12.3 cubic feet of space. So you're not gonna be carrying too much stuff back here if you're gonna be holding six people. If you fold down the second row, which you can see I've done here, that expands it out to 45 cubic feet of space, which is much more usable. And then you can also push this button over here. If you fold down every seat, this car roughly gives you about 75 cubic feet of space. So that's significantly more, about 10 more cubic feet versus the compact competitors, but it is going to be less than the bigger three row midsize offerings. Moving on to the interior of the Sorento plug-in hybrid. Remember, this is the fully loaded SX Prestige model. So it will include some nicer features that you can't get on the regular hybrid. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, first of all, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see Kia first introduced this key on the Stinger. It's a nice key. It even includes remote start on the fob. It doesn't have this smart park feature that I saw on the new Kia EV6. However, if you also wanna use your phone, Kia Connect phone app will allow you to remote start the vehicle. You can also lock and unlock it. You can ping it, you can see the charge status of this vehicle so that's something to keep in mind as an owner as well now approaching the vehicle and opening the door you can see the snow white pearl exterior of my tester is complemented by this really attractive blue and white interior i was not expecting this level of uniqueness in the sorrento this is unique to the sx prestige model you can get it in either black or this blue or you can also get a gray leather as well but you can see this is like a perforated napa leather the seats are heated and ventilated you have a 14-way adjustable power driver's seat 10-way on the passenger side you can also adjust the bolstering you can also adjust the thigh extender uh, the steering wheel you can see looks really fancy and luxurious with the blue leather and the white leather the contrast with the white airbag cover and the blue steering wheel column and the blue dashboard with the blue around the, the door panel. As you can see, the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic here, metal accents uh, for the door handle, really nice brushed dark metal trim, real leather stitching on the door panels. 
uh, nice padded, padded armrest. The 12 speaker Bose stereo sounds decent. It's much better versus the six speaker and the regular SX. You can see you got two person memory seats. The window controls feel high quality and tactile. Uh, you have a one touch automatic up down for all four windows. And then you also have power folding mirrors, which are included with the prestige package. So overall, the cabin makes a really great first impression. And with around seven inches of ground clearance, you do have a really nice, easy step in height. So this is a really easy car to kind of live with on a day to day basis. And then once you get in, you can see it almost looks like a luxury car in here. Kia does a really good job with that. When I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, giving you a nice impression of quality. Now starting the vehicle up, the button is right here where you'd expect it to be. It's blocked a little bit by the steering wheel. And you can see once I started up, this particular one here has the 12 inch supervision all digital display here. This is unique to the SX Prestige. You can't even get this on the regular hybrid version of the Sorento. You have to buy the gas version to see this really nice dashboard. You also have the Kia uh, infotainment system here. Uh, their latest one, it is a 10 and a quarter inch display. However, it is still lacking Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a wireless function. It does have Apple CarPlay, but you have to plug in your phone via a wired connection. And then when you do that, you can see you can adjust it to give you a split screen like I have it here, or you can go into the settings. You can expand it out to take up the entire screen. I actually prefer the split screen arrangement because it allows you to put your audio information, all your other information while you have the CarPlay running. This is something you can only adjust when the vehicle is not connected to your phone. So I have to unplug my phone to switch that out if I prefer, uh, which I think Kia should adjust that. I should be able to change this on the fly even when the vehicle is connected. But you can see there's the CarPlay. It looks good. It's really quick and responsive. The graphics are also really good. Going back to the Kia system, you can see here's the embedded GPS, which the GPS is perfectly fine. It's the same one that I've shown you in some Hyundai and Kia products. It works fairly nicely. Um, and it's also relatively responsive. Most of you are going to be using uh, the phone anyways. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's the full top-down 360 camera and the graphics and the resolution are good. You have parking sensors front and rear. You can also change the view in different views and whatnot. It's not quite as new as the one that I've seen in the Kia EV6 where it allows you to do a full 360 scan, perimeter scan, but this is still very nice compared to something like the Toyota competition. You can see the dash also has some more blue on the upper part of the dash. This is a soft touch injection molded plastic, no heads up display. There's some faux stitching over here, more of that fake brushed aluminum look. It is padded down here, which is nice. I like the way this looks here. It's all very logically laid out. You have three or dual zone climate control, which is great. You have, um, your heated and cooled seats, which are down here, you can see heated three levels and then ventilated three levels, which is nice. You can also change the climate control to just be only for the driver. I also like the way the vents look. It's a very interesting look. And then you can see down here, uh, wireless phone charging pad, or you can also use it as a place to put your phone more piano black plastic trim. The shifter is unique on the hybrid and plug-in hybrid. You can see it's a rotary dial, just twisted to the left to go to reverse to the right to go to drive, push the P, buck, P button to go into park. And then you can see your drive mode selector is here along with your cup holders. There are four different drive modes. There's an eco, sports, nor snow, and, and smart, uh, which is an adaptive mode. You can see when I do that, it changes the way the gauge disp uh, displays look. You can also customize this to be in one display uh, of your choosing all the time, depending on what you prefer. I kind of like how it changes based on the drive mode. The sport one looks good. It also gives you a full tachometer. Uh, as well, which you also technically get in all the other versions, except for Smarter Eco, which gets rid of the tech and gives you a power meter instead. So that's kind of different. Electronic parking brake over here. You can also push that button. It'll give you the camera system again. It's got downhill assist control, heated steering wheel. And then there's also an automatic mode, a hybrid mode, and an electric mode, which we'll try that out during the driving scene. The one thing this car gives you in relation to the regular Sorento is a hot plug-in hybrid page that shows you your range, battery information, charge management, eco driving, and then the energy flow. The energy flow also looks pretty cool. Way better graphics versus uh, what I've seen in some of the Toyota products. You can also expand that out and take up the whole screen. Lots of great storage over here, which is nice. Padded center console, and then you can see center console area has a pretty deep storage bin. Uh, in terms of USBs, you've got three of them in there. They're all USB A's, not the USB C arrangement. You can see the seats also, this is the Napa leather. They feel comfortable and supportive. They could be a little bit softer in terms of the material, but I like how the seats are heated and ventilated and you have a 10-way power driver's seat on the passenger side. Uh, above me, you can see no LED lighting in the cabin. You get that if you guys go for the panoramic sunroof option for an extra $1,300. Without it, you just get incandescent lighting, which definitely looks makes it look a little bit 
older. Um, opening up the glove box, you can see it's a bin style, it's damped and it's lined with felt, and offers decent storage. But overall, the visibility in here is good. The driver assistance tech is good. Um, the drive wise package is gonna be included on this trim. The materials are also nice. It feels very much like a luxury car. And again, if you want all of the bells and whistles of the SX Prestige, you have to go for the plug-in hybrid model because the regular hybrid does not offer this trim level. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat of the Sorento plug-in hybrid. Remember, this vehicle comes with three rows as standard, and if you guys uh, look at the second row, the only way you can get it is with the captain's chair. So technically, all the plug-in hybrids only seat up to six people because you have two in the front or in the second row and then two in the back. The legroom back here is plentiful. In fact, the seats, they move forward and back, and they offer a feature to get into the back seat really easily. Kia says you get just over 40 inches of total legroom back here. That's with the seats all the way back. Uh, you can see the blue looks great back here as well. You have soft, the same soft touch materials on the back doors uh, that are mirrored on the front. You also have two level heated back seats back here, a nice cup holder over there, a nice big grab handle over here. Uh, getting inside, you can see there is just a ton of space for me to get comfortable back here. It's a really, really great place to spend time. The seats also recline, which is nice. Shutting the door. You can hear the door sounds nice and solid. You have two storage pockets over here. Technically, there are two levels. So you have one at the top, one at the bottom. Rear seat air vents, which is nice. You have another USB-C charging port over here. Uh, and you also have two USB uh, charging ports built into the seat back and then one down there. Uh, which is great. Nice big pass-through area over here, which allows you to get into the third row. These, this armrest is also nicely adjustable. You can kind of adjust it, uh, its height based on what you find more comfortable. Back here you can see lots of headroom, but it is a little bit dark, so I highly recommend going for the panoramic sunroof option. Now let me get into the third row so I can show you guys what the space is like. Now Kia says there's around 29 inches back there, which is very, very small. Uh, you can get back here pretty easily just by pushing that button. You can see the seat kind of hydraulically moves forward. And then you can see the narrower body of this vehicle definitely doesn't allow for three across like in the Telluride. So that's something to keep in mind if you're comparing the two. Now let me get back here and show you guys the space. This is with the second row seat all the way back. Remember, you can ask this passenger to move this seat up a little bit, but you can see at five foot seven, I can sit back here for shorter periods. It would be more comfortable if this was a little bit for more forward. The seat, however, is very low. So you can see there's like no thigh support over here. At least Kia does give you a USB port over there, another USB port over here. The seats don't recline. Um, that button, don't push that while you're sitting. It's going to fold the seat forward, although I don't think it'll work. Although that's for the second row seats. I'm not sure if it'll work when the vehicle's moving. Uh, you do have basically hard touch plastic materials everywhere. There is some lighting back here, as you can see for the cargo area, or you can also turn it on back here if you're sitting back here. But overall, headroom is decent without the sunroof, but uh, legroom is a little bit tight, thigh support's a little bit tight, but this is still one of the few vehicles out there that has three rows of seats and also gives you the electrified driving option. So I've been waiting a while to finally drive the new Sorento plug-in hybrid. Remember, this is the first time that we've seen a plug-in hybrid version of the Sorento. This nameplate has been around for almost 20 years. So it's about time, and now that we are finally driving it, I wanna see if this is a viable alternative to something like the Toyota RAV4 Prime. Uh, of course, there are several plug-in hybrid SUVs coming to market, but this is one of the few models out there to come standard with three rows. It seats up to six people, and with 34 more horsepower than the regular Sorento, 32 miles of electric only range. By the way, when I started this vehicle, this video with a full charge, it was showing about 32 miles on the dot of all electric range. So that's pretty good range. Uh, although I was hoping to see a little bit more, it is gonna be far, or it's gonna be more than enough for most people on their daily commutes. But the first thing I wanna test out is the zero to 60 performance of this vehicle. So we'll put it into sport mode here. Um, vehicle is fully charged, almost fully charged at 90%. And we'll just go ahead and floor it. Good, good feel off the line. It's in hybrid mode right now, so it's using all of its 261 horsepower. Zero to 60 in 7.14 seconds. That's pretty acceptable performance. Uh, a smidge slower versus the Sorento that I tested last year that had the 2.5 liter turbo engine with the eight speed dual clutch transmission. But I mean, with horsepower that has, it's technically less horsepower than that model, so it doesn't surprise me. This feels about a second faster than the last hybrid Sorento, although I didn't get a chance to actually test that out with zero to 60, my zero to 60 timing equipment. The thing about this car is you actually do feel the extra 300 pounds that it kind of carries around. Uh, that ba bigger battery pack is basically what's responsible for it. It's underneath the cargo floor of this vehicle. It does take up a little bit of the cargo space back there, but uh, let's go ahead and see one more time what I can get. I'm not gonna brake torque it this time. That didn't really help last time, but let's go ahead and see. 
strong pull off the line, the six-speed auto shifts relatively fine. It, sh it short shifts at like 6,000 RPM. 7.7 .7 seconds there, and that's going slightly uphill. So 7.1, 7.7. Um, this is perfectly adequate performance. However, if you're expecting that kind of shove in your seat of torque that you get from the RAV4 Prime, for example, which technically is a class below this car, but they are roughly the same price, this is going to leave you slightly disappointed. Uh, Kia's plug-in hybrid system is slightly different as the fact that it doesn't use a CVT and the battery is smaller. It's only 13.8 kilowatts versus 18.1 in the Toyota. And the electric motor only delivers about 89 horsepower. That's about half the power as something that you get in the RAV4 Prime. So unlike the Toyota, the Kia, when I switch it into EV, let's, let's switch it into eco mode here. I'm going to put it into uh, electric mode. Um, let's go ahead and turn the traction control back on. The thing about this car is if you want to drive it just like uh, an electric vehicle, um, this is where the Sorento is going to show a little bit of its disadvantages here. First of all, I can't drive this vehicle on all electric power for very long. If I if I drive the vehicle with a light touch on the throttle, it will drive an electric only at you know highway speeds. However, anytime you need maximum acceleration, I did notice that this car feels relatively slow. You can also feel the shifting of the six-speed auto in electric mode, which is a strange sensation. Uh, but anytime you basically go near the throttle and you need a little bit more juice. For example, I need more torque to get up the hill. You can, you can feel the gas engine comes on and it's kind of annoying to have it come on because I want it to be driving in all electric mode. That's something that Toyota really got right with their plug-in hybrid powertrains. It feels like an electric car at low speed or around town, just like the new Volvo plug-in hybrids that I tested with their bigger battery packs. But like, see right, right here, it's in electric only, which is nice. You feel that torque, but then I'm barely touching the throttle and the gas engine comes on. Why? Why, Kia? I don't want it to come on. Um, yes, the, the car's computer is saying, okay, he's demanding more acceleration, but that's like very, very little uh, pressure that I'm putting on the throttle and it's automatically turning on the gas engine. So that part there is kind of a disappointment. So if you're wondering, does the Sorento plug-in hybrid drive like an electric vehicle when it's got a nearly full charge? Because right now, um, the battery pack is at 93%. It's almost basically full charge. It's showing 28 miles of all electric range. Uh, and you can tootle around this vehicle around town in pure electric. Uh, for example, also when I hit the brakes here, it is recharging the batteries, although the, this vehicle doesn't offer any sort of regen braking, especially the paddles on the wheel actually control the gear select changes, not the actual regen braking. Put my foot down here. Like, I'm gonna try to see if I can accelerate. There, it's coming on. I'm barely touching the throttle and it's turning on the gas engine. I have it in electric mode. It's in eco right now. So I was gonna try to do a zero to 60 in this car in pure EV, but I don't think it's gonna be possible uh, because anytime I go like, like a, th a quarter more throttle, which is probably what most people do, in the real world, you're going to be waking up that gas engine. So it's just not possible in this car. It, it is a slight disappointment uh, if you want to think of this car as an electric vehicle only when it's fully charged. It just simply isn't that. It's mostly a plug-in hybrid. It's mostly a hybrid all the time. Uh, but the rest of the car is a nice experience. The steering in the car feels good. It's relatively precise. It's not really much in terms of feedback. The Sorento, the new one, feels big. It feels big and it feels kind of heavy. It's definitely not the sportier option, surprisingly, the RAV4 Prime um, feels sportier to drive than this. Visibility, however, is really good. I like the driver assistance tech. Kia does a really great job with their uh, highway driving assistance. It's like their second generation. You've got the blind view camera, so when you signal left or signal right, it shows you what's in your blind spot in the actual super, vision, uh, super meter cluster here, which that's unique to the plug-in hybrid version. Um, you have to go for this SX Prestige to get it. The seats are also very comfortable. The interior is nice. It's got two large displays here. The 10 and a quarter inch display also looks really good. And around town, uh, or in mixed driving, I've been averaging around 31 miles to the gallon in this vehicle, which 34 is the combined rating. I, 79 MPGE is the electric and gas rating, which I think that number is absolutely pointless because it's the miles per gallon equivalent of using electricity, which isn't the way you measure electricity. You measure it in kilowatts um, or kilowatt hours. So it's like, I think the efficiency of this car is fine, but I'm almost kind of wondering, is the plug-in hybrid even worth it? I mean, yes, you do get a $6,600 tax credit with this vehicle, but it's a whopping 11 grand more 
versus the gas only version or versus the hybrid only version. Um, and I almost think that the hybrid's probably the better deal because remember with this plug-in hybrid, you do get a smaller gas tank. So you're gonna have less range, about 460 miles of total range versus 600 in the regular hybrid. So again, something to keep in mind. So right now the vehicle has just been driving around in electric only because I was really light on the throttle. Like I'm talking about really light. And just for an example, I'll show you again what I mean. Come to a full stop here, it's an eco. Put my foot down. You feel the torque there, that's nice. You feel it shift, and then look at that. Gas engine coming on. I, I promise, I'm literally not even touching the throttle very hard, and it's just always coming on. So kind of a disappointment there. Um, so the rest of the car, however, is really good. The Sorento has, has been a really good vehicle in general. I just, I think after driving all variants of the Sorento, Obviously, if you want the speediest model, you're going to get the regular SX Turbo, uh, the 2.5 Turbo with the 8-speed. However, if you want to save money on fuel, my recommendation, I think, skip the plug-in hybrid and just go for the regular hybrid. Until Kia increases the battery size like to almost 20 kilowatt hours, maybe increases the range by another 10 or 15 miles and give us more a stronger electric motor so this vehicle can feel like an electric car when it's in EV mode, I'm probably going to have to say the hybrid is probably the better deal and it's going to be the one that uh, makes more sense especially if you're trying to save money. So when Kia first introduced the all new fourth generation Sorento last year, I was very impressed with the gas powered powertrain. The SX Prestige with the X-Line package I think is one of the best looking and most interesting vehicles in the family crossover segment because what the Sorento gives you is a nice tweener size vehicle. For the price of a compact SUV, you can essentially get most of the qualities that you like of a mid-size vehicle, especially the interior room and with a standard third row seat, it is a very appealing car. Now, when I had a chance to drive the hybrid, I thought the hybrid was a nice addition. However, I haven't had a chance to drive the all wheel drive hybrid yet. Now that I've finally gotten a chance to drive the plug-in hybrid model, the plug-in hybrid model I had very high expectations for because I see it as a viable alternative to something like the Toyota RAV4 Prime. And however, sadly, after spending the week driving this, I do think that the plug-in hybrid model comes with some compromises. I think that it doesn't give you enough battery electric only power. I want the electric motor to be stronger. I want the battery pack to be larger. I want this vehicle to feel like an electric car when you're driving it, uh, plugging it in every day. And I don't like how this car has been tuned to basically turn on the gas engine on all the time, even around town during light to moderate throttle applications. I think that kind of makes the car disappointing. However, if you think of it more as a plug-in hybrid vehicle, it is certainly appealing. I mean, with 261 horsepower, 0 to 60 in around 7.2 seconds, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, with 32 miles of electric only range, I was actually able to match that in my week's worth of testing. However, again, that comes with an asterisk because anytime you go near the throttle just for moderate acceleration, it's going to turn on the gas engine. You're going to be using gas. And that's kind of not what I want to see in something like this. I do think that if Kia enlarges the battery pack and then doubles the output of the electric motor, it'll certainly make it even more appealing. And I know the company could do that. They've got a fantastic electric vehicle called the EV6, which I think is one of the best electric cars out there. But for me personally, if you're going to consider the Sorento, I think that you'd be better off looking at just the regular hybrid and getting all wheel drive. That's going to give you the best in terms of gas mileage, the best in terms of range with 600 miles of total range versus 450 in this model. And it's also going to be significantly less expensive because the regular Sorento starts at around $29,600 for the base version. The hybrid starts at around $34,000 and some change. The plug-in hybrid is $11,000 more. This car starts at around $45,190 for the base SX. The Prestige package on my tester for an extra $3,000 adds things like the power folding mirrors, the Bose, the Bose stereo system, the heated ventilated seats, the heated steering wheel, the memory seats. It's probably a worthy addition. Uh, my tester all in with the destination charge and the snow white pearl color is around $49,800. So basically $50,000 makes it the same price as a fully loaded RAV4 Prime, but however, it does charge significantly slower. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Personally, uh, this car does qualify for the federal tax credit of around 6,600, uh, uh, which isn't obviously the full the full 7,500 because of the smaller battery pack. That does, in, in theory, lower the price of this car to around $42,000 with that tax credit. However, again, you could get a fully loaded hybrid version, which will do basically the same things that this car does, minus the electric-only range. This gives you a little bit more of electric-only cruising. However, 
not quite as much as what I expected for something like this. That car will top out at around $40,000, and I personally think it's probably the better deal. But however, keep in mind, you can't get a fully loaded SX Prestige on the regular hybrid, so that's another reason why you might you may want to go for the plug-in hybrid model. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.